Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Everyone loves dinosaurs, but what were dinosaurs really like? And how do we know so much about them? That's what this program is all about. Intro to Fossils and Dinosaurs. We certainly know a lot about dinosaurs. For example, we know that some were really, really big, while others were very small. Some dinosaurs ate other animals, while others ate only plants. We also know that dinosaurs are extinct, which means there are no living dinosaurs left on Earth. No one has ever seen a real live dinosaur. So how do we know so much about them? The answer is fossils. Fossils. Fossils are the bones, teeth, and other remains of plants and animals that lived a long time ago. There are different kinds of fossils. The first type of fossil we're going to learn about is called a body fossil. How do body fossils form? Well, let's say a dinosaur died near a pond or lake. Over the years, sand and mud piled up around the dead dinosaur. The soft body parts like skin, brain, and heart decayed. However, minerals from the ground seeped into the bones and teeth, and eventually the hard parts of the dinosaur's body turned to stone too. That's what a body fossil is. The next type of fossil we're going to learn about is called a trace fossil. A trace fossil is formed when an impression is made in the mud or dirt. The impression dries and becomes hard and eventually turns to stone. A trace fossil is made from any impressions like footprints, skin, or in this example, the feathers of the Archaeopteryx, a primitive 150 million year old bird. You're probably wondering, how do you find fossils? Well, to find fossils, you have to dig. Today, special scientists called paleontologists carefully dig up dinosaur fossils so they can study them. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies fossils. Paleontologists travel the world digging up fossils. It's long, painstaking work. Paleontologists and their helpers chip carefully away at rock and then brush the dust away, being careful not to crack and ruin the fossil. Once they find a fossil, they cover it with plaster to protect it. They pack the larger fossils in crates and send them back to a laboratory. There, the plaster is removed and the fossil is examined. Some fossils are put in displays in museums all over the world. Understanding Fossils Today, thousands of dinosaur fossils have been found in almost every part of the world. Even though the last dinosaurs roamed the Earth 65 million years ago, fossils provide us with lots of information about dinosaurs. Every fossil has a story to tell. For example, a dinosaur footprint can tell how big the dinosaur was, and a series of tracks can tell how fast or slow the animal was moving. How can a scientist find that out? By measuring the stride and pace. Stride is the distance from one footprint to the other footprint made by the same foot. Pace is the distance from one footprint to the next footprint made by the opposite foot. By measuring stride and pace, scientists can determine how fast the animal was walking or running. Here's a fossil of dinosaur teeth. Notice they are pointy and sharp. Fossil teeth can tell scientists what a dinosaur ate. How? 
Well, one way is for scientists to look to animals of today for clues. For example, if you look at the teeth of a real live alligator, you notice that its teeth are pointy and very sharp too. What does an alligator eat? Other animals. So that's a clue to scientists that dinosaurs with pointy sharp teeth probably ate other animals too. Animals who eat meat are called carnivores. Allosaurus, a fierce predator, is an example of a carnivore. Notice its sharp pointy teeth. Paleontologists have also found dinosaur fossil teeth that are round and flat. Today, animals with flat round teeth like cows, elephants, and giraffes are plant eaters. Plant eaters are known as herbivores. So it makes sense that a dinosaur with flat round teeth like Triceratops ate only plants too. You're probably wondering, after paleontologists find dinosaur bones, how do they know how to put them together? Well, they try to put bones together the way they think the skeleton looked when the dinosaur was alive. From the skeleton, scientists can determine how long, how tall, and estimate how much the dinosaur weighed. The Age of Dinosaurs Did you know not all dinosaurs lived at the same time? To better understand when dinosaurs lived, scientists divided the history of life into three big parts called eras. The first part they named the Paleozoic Era. Paleo means ancient, and zoic means life. During this time, marine life was abundant. This is the oldest era. The next era scientists called the Mesozoic Era. Meso means middle, and zoic again means life. During this time, dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Cenozoic is the last era. Cenozoic means recent life. This is the era when mammals became important. Different dinosaurs appeared during different times of the Mesozoic Era. The Mesozoic Era is divided into three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous period. Paleontologists have found many Platosaurus skeletons, one of the oldest known dinosaurs. The Jurassic period is the age of large dinosaurs, like the Brachiosaurus and the Stegosaurus. In the Cretaceous period lived the Triceratops and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. How do scientists know which fossils are older than other fossils? Well, the relative age of a fossil depends on what layer of Earth scientists find the fossil. Older fossils from the Triassic period are found in lower layers of rock. Younger fossils from the Cretaceous period are closer to the top, and the fossils from the Jurassic period are in between. Different kinds of dinosaurs. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. But were all dinosaurs like lizards? Not really. You see, scientists have placed different dinosaurs into two different groups based on the structure of their hip. Some dinosaurs had hip bones similar to those of modern day lizards, where their legs sprawled out from the sides. So scientists called them lizard hip. The scientific term for lizard hip is sauriscia. The Tsariskians are divided into two groups. The first group is Sauropodomorpha. In this group, you will find the largest known dinosaurs, like the Apatosaurus, which grew to be about 70 feet long and weighed 30 tons. The second group of Sariskian dinosaurs are known as Theropoda. 
these dinosaurs have sharp claws and walk on two feet like Tyrannosaurus rex. Other dinosaurs had hips like modern day birds. Their hip structure caused their legs to stick out from under their bodies. They're known as ornithischia, which means bird-hipped. Ornithischian dinosaurs came in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and had very unusual features. Some Ornithischian dinosaurs like Parasaurophilus walked on two legs. Parasaurophilus is easily recognizable because of the hollow bony crest on top of his head that could measure up to six feet long. Stegosaurus is an example of an Ornithischian dinosaur that walked on four legs. Stegosaurus's most prominent feature are the bony plates on its back. Euoplosophilus, another Ornithischian dinosaur, also walked on four legs. Euoplosophilus could grow up to 25 feet long and 8 feet wide. Fossils give us a very good idea of what dinosaurs were like. However, the one thing that fossils haven't been able to tell us is what color or skin patterns the dinosaur had. Maybe they came in different colors. Maybe some were gray, or brown, or yellow. Maybe some had stripes, like zebras or tigers. Or maybe spots, like leopards. It's also difficult to tell what dinosaurs sounded like. Did they have a roar of a lion? Or a trumpet sound like an elephant? Or maybe they didn't make any noise at all? Why are dinosaurs extinct? So far, fossils haven't given us any clues as to why dinosaurs are extinct. Hopefully, someday, paleontologists will find a fossil that will give us that answer. However, right now all we have are theories, or ideas, as to why dinosaurs are extinct. Some theories are based on what scientists think was happening during the Mesozoic era. During that time, continents were first forming, and there were violent volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and flooding. Weather patterns changed dramatically. Lush tropical areas may have become deserts. Heavy rains may have turned deserts into flooded plains. Other scientists have a theory that a giant asteroid hit the Earth. It caused an enormous cloud of dust that circled the Earth, blocking out sunlight and causing the Earth to cool. This killed most of the plants and eventually most of the animals. We only have theories as to why dinosaurs became extinct. Paleontologists will just keep on digging for clues. Who knows? You could be the person who finds the fossil that will give us the answer.